Hey, this is Sasha, and welcome to another episode on Let's Talk Stocks. And in today's episode, I'm going to share with you um, two technical analysis uh, indicators. And uh, I think for some of you, your mind is going to be blown at what I'm going to share with you today because uh, it's a lot different than what most people will tell you. Um, selling these uh, programs and trying to share with you the most awesome, amazing indicator to watch. Uh, you know, I keep things simple. If you've seen my charts uh, way back when I used to record a lot more videos uh, for free on YouTube, uh, some of the recaps, uh, or if you're in the member section on our website, uh, you'll see a lot of the charts that I have are simple. And they're simple for a reason because I really only use two main indicators, really three main things, uh, but two main indicators that you can stem and use for our many other things. So. Let me share this with you because for some of you, you're in for a treat. You're wondering, hey, which indicator is the best? Which one should I use? How should I use it? How do I apply it? And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to complicate things. I'm going to simplify it down for you that you really only need two, two main things. So let's go to the screen and let me share this with you. So you can see here I am on TC2000. By the way, if you go to our website, you can get a discount on this uh, software. But um, really, I use two main indicators. And they're not really even indicators. They're just uh, current notifications, really, that anybody will use. Uh, it's, it's price and volume. That's it. That's the only two things that I have on my charts that I really look at. Now, you're probably seeing uh, here moving averages, which I do have on there. So you could say that's the third. Uh, but really, I can show you that I stem everything from price and volume because with price and volume, you can get everything that you need. So take a look. I've cleaned up this chart. It doesn't matter which chart you look at. Pick Apple, pick Netflix, pick uh, Google. Price and volume is the only thing you need. I'm going to go back to Wix just so you're aware of it. And why is it that price and volume is all you need? You know, a lot of people talk about MACD, RSI, stochastics, you know, and I've used those things and they're helpful here and there. But I would say out of looking at a chart, when I look at a chart, 95% of the time I'm looking at price and volume and maybe one or two or three or four percent of the time, maybe here and there, I'll scan a few other indicators. But I don't really use it in terms of, hey, let me make my whole decision based on these indicators. So when I'm looking at a chart like this, call it, this is a blank slate, right? This is your white page, white paper. This is what I start with, price and volume. And what I look at is I look at the behavior of this. That's the key is you look at the behavior. So price tells you a lot. Um, most people think, hey, I need the MACD, RSI. I got to learn um, a lot of other indicators, uh, but you don't need that. So for example, when I go here, and you start seeing a tight consolidation right here on these bars. They're kind of moving sideways. Well, what does that tell you? It means the stock is stagnant. You know, the bars are not moving up and down a lot. Uh, they're kind of moving sideways. They're in the same price range. What does it tell you when the bar all of a sudden right here becomes wide price spread? It's a big bar. Think of it like, boom, like a rocket ship hitting and exploding uh, through the surface, right? Think of it like going and going as quick as possible. What does that tell you? It means it's got speed, it's got momentum, it's got juice, right? Because before, when you got stagnant stuff, it tells you that behavior is light and weak. But here, when you look at the price, if the price is moving quick and you got a big bar from the low to the high, from the open to the closed, if you got a big bar, it tells you there's movement, something is happening. It means there's strength, it means there's power. So just by looking at the bars, you can see a lot of uh, communication that's happening between you and the stock. Let's take a look at another one. Let's, let's look at Starbucks here, for example. And I'll just go ahead and clean this chart out so you can really see here what I mean. So look at it right here. Look at all these bars, consolidating, consolidating, sideways, sideways, uh, not a lot of action. But then all of a sudden, boom, you got a big bar. What does that tell you? Massive selling pressure, massive amounts of, uh, of energy. Now, take this and combine it with volume and you got everything you need. Well, why is that? Well, because that's where everything else, many of these other indicators, I would say probably more than half, drive the indication from price and volume, right? So if you look at... Um, 
for example, uh, moving averages, right? So if we go ahead and add a moving average, you don't even need a moving average to be able to kind of figure out, hey, how is this stock moving? Well, you, you know it's kind of delayed, and you go ahead and you can kind of draw curvature out there, uh, depending on the length and time and so forth. So you can just go ahead and kind of draw out that moving average, connecting the dots. Uh, same thing with the volume here. If you go ahead and just kind of take the average right there, you could just kind of draw a line across and you get an average of volume. So when you start seeing uh, volume bars that are picking up like this above the average, right, you know the stock is going to be moving very well. And you combine that with nice big bars, right, when, especially when you get like big, big bars like that. Uh, that shows you massive strength. Now, those are the main two things and you have to combine that with realistic expectations because when a stock explodes to the moon like this right here at this point you got to realize and recognize man these things aren't going to go up forever and when these things explode that quickly be prepared for a pullback and that's why you get these shorter term pullbacks from time to time right that's why you got this pullback here because this exploded so quickly in uh, Starbucks. So if we're looking at the November time frame, we're, we're exploding from 60 to about 70 in just a couple of weeks. That's quick. Because normally here Starbucks from August to about August did nothing. Um, from August 2017 to August 2018, you basically went sideways. So this is why uh, when you look at these things, you're trying to evaluate, hey, what's going on on the behavior front. So let's evaluate now a company here like Square and let's take a look. Okay, so at the beginning, we know things are a little stagnant, but then what happens? Well, we see some wide price spread. Let me bring this uh, chart back. Well, initially here in 2016, 2017, things were moving sideways. The bars were kind of small and thin and here and there you got a few breakout bars. But then you got a massive breakout bar around end of February of 2017 where that stock exploded past the $15 level and it went from 15 to about 17 and that's in about a week, right? A couple days. Um, and you combine that with volume. So that bar is probably two times to three times the size of most of the average bars before that with the exception of some down bars. And you got to recognize, hey, the down bars are typically bigger in general just because of the panic. But then again, you get sideways movement, and then again, you get massive explosions up. And when you get that, and you got a volume, that all of a sudden, you can say, hey, it's moving well, and the strength is behind it. Again, stock needs to pause after a huge move, and then again, you get a huge surge, big, wide price spread, huge movement in price, volume is there, all things look good. Now, I know that people uh, like these RSIs, MACDs, and moving averages, but take a look at this stock. Do you think you can draw a moving average here? And all it does is really just kind of trend and trail, trail that stock. And that's really all you're doing. And if the stock pulls back, you know, like, um, like let's say over here, well, you're probably going to trail it something like that. And then again, we'll come back up into that level. So, you know, looking at it, you don't have to combine all these things with a MACD, uh, stochastics. Now, you can, but again, it's just a scanning thing. So what would I do here if I was to use, like, like let's say, another indicator? Well, all you need to do is look how far stretch things are. Well, how do you determine that? Well, I'm looking at the moving average right now. I can already tell how far stretched it is. Probably in September, October, that stock was stretched because look at the bars that happened before that compared to the recent bars. So I already know it's been stretched. And the same thing on the pullback, okay? So when we pull back, if we've been selling for four, five, six months on a stock that's been healthy, you probably stretched and you're due for a bounce. So this is what happens and what you're watching for. Now, if I put a moving average on here, let me just show you how this really um, uh, works. Put a simple moving average right here. We'll do a 20-day on square. And you can see, if we take the distance of the moving average, let me make this line a little thicker for you. Uh, if we take the distance from the moving average to where that stock was at its highs at certain points, you can see that when it was very far away from the moving average, the stock pulled back, right? 
So again, take, just take any point. You don't have to make this like a rocket science, a science uh, experiment here. Uh, again, it pulls back. So again, we keep stretching. So from the moving average, looking at October highs, boom, we move very quickly to the upside. So it pulled back, right? Now you could go ahead and use Bollinger Bands. So if I go ahead and look at Bollinger Bands here, well, that's another indicator, right? You could say, well, you could use that. Well, absolutely, how far things are stretched. And you can see that those points I've outlined right here where the stock pulled back in November 2017 and March 2018 and in October um, 2018 as well, those stocks were stretched up in the upper range of the Bollinger Band and then the stock pulled back. But do you need the Bollinger Bands to see that? No, you could just go ahead and stem that from the moving average. And do you really need the moving average to be able to uh, recognize how fast that stock moved? No, because if I remove the moving average, you can see that the trend, a lot of up days in a row, and once you start moving at a fast angle, you can bet it's not as realistic. So the faster and steeper the angle without a pullback, the more unrealistic it is. You can average these things and they all stem. A lot of these indicators, they stem from that volume and from the price. Doesn't matter whether you talk at MACD, you talk stochastics. If you pull these things up, MACD uh, calculation here. Uh, let's, let me just show you here. So how is the MACD calculated? Well, take a look right here. MACD calculated by subtracting the 26 period exponential moving average from the 12 period moving average. So think about that. It's still moving averages, right? It's still moving averages. Now you might say, oh, well, that's more specific of a signal. Uh, you know, that does the calculation. Yeah, in theory, but you know, the reality is, is it, it just starts playing tricks on you. So here I have like, let's say an RSI indicator when things are um, uh, the strength index. So you can see the strength index here starting to die out. Well, okay, this confirms to me that the stock is selling off a bit, but I can already see the bars there. I can see it rolling over and I already know the stock went up like a rocket ship. So big deal. What's the big deal here? You know, doesn't you don't need the RSI here to know that, okay? Um, so, you know, so people make it way too complicated, way more um, crazy than you need you need it to be. Here's here's your MACD, okay? Uh, let's take a look here, maybe at at the daily. Here's your, you got a histogram. So again, here's the MACD. It's getting a one is a crossover. So there's a lot of different ways to look at these signals, but again. Do you really need that to be able to see that? I just showed you that same exact thing with the volume, with the price, and it all stems from those two main points. Because especially as you get volume that's picking up right here, big red volume bars right there, after a stock is stretched and moving too quick, what do you think is going to happen? So anyway. I hope this makes sense. These are the two things you focus on because from there you can get the moving average. You can just draw it on there. You can uh, see how well the stock is moving by seeing the wide price spread. If that stock is moving sluggish and price is just moving lightly, well, it's sluggish. If it starts moving in an accelerated way, you know, on a breakout point, let's say over here at a earlier breakout point in, in Square, well, you had a huge bar. That's a good sign because when you compare it to the previous bars, you know, it's moving well. You know, if you're looking for um, a holy grail indicator, there's none out there. And the, the whole point behind these indicators is really just to kind of confirm your analyses. But a lot of these things um, stem from price and volume. So keep it simple. Don't make it too complicated. I found myself over the years, uh, you know, the more complicated I made it looking at 10, 20 different indicators, it just plays mental tricks on you. Well, the MACD says this, the ADX says that, the RSI says that, the PPO says a different thing. So, you know, I've had these on here for training tools and purposes, uh, but the reality is I just keep it simple. So stick with that. It makes the most sense, but try it out and see what works for you. Anyway, Thank you so much for joining me in this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful as we've been refreshing some technical analysis videos. Uh, we have an upcoming book coming up here soon. Keep an eye out on that. Subscribe to the newsletter so that way you get notified when it's released. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.